Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling. Our coverage of the sport continues. We head to Colorado Springs today. The Nike hot seat will be filled by a woman whose smile absolutely thrilled me. Why? Because I hadn't seen her for a couple years. Sharon Jacobson had her hand raised, and then she had won a U.S. Open title. She joins us now. Sharon, how are you? I'm doing very well. How are you? Good. Congratulations uh, on your performance in Las Vegas. Your last championship uh, win came in 2006, and then, well, you kind of disappeared. It's it seems as if uh, well, the 2012 U.S. Open, perhaps uh, where you you placed fourth, but you disappeared to the world of mixed martial arts. What yep. was you, talk about leaving wrestling? Um, I just, I kept getting hurt, you know, I, I kept getting hurt in my, and it seemed like right before every Olympic, Olympic year, I would, within that year, I would get a serious injury and it was really disheartening and it was really frustrating. It's not just coming back physically, it's coming back mentally from injury, you know, it's, um, it's really, <clears throat> it's a really tough journey and I, I did it a, a few times. So with, you know, six to eight month recoveries and, um, it was just, it was just a lot on me and mentally and physically. And so I thought my time was done with wrestling. I thought, okay, well, I did my best. I just can't not get hurt anymore. But, um, I had a few friends, Sarah McMahon and Randy Miller. They, they started to transition into fighting. Randy actually came back as you know, um, to wrestling and, but, um, yeah, they transitioned to fighting. They're like, you know, like this is a lot easier on the body and because there's so many different aspects to it. One day you're boxing, one day you're doing jiu-jitsu, one day you know, you're throwing kicks, one day you're wrestling. It's all different. <clears throat> and I feel like with wrestling, it's a lot of the same wear and tear every day, day in and day out. And um, especially with the American mentality, you know, of go, 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 go. It's good for conditioning, but it's not, it's not good for longevity, I don't think. So um, I think, you know, there's certain periods of time to have that mentality, and then there's certain times where you just need to – focus on technique and things like that but anyhow besides that i i wanted to compete i still had that competitive drive in me and i was always an aggressive competitor so i really felt like i could yeah i can do that i can go and punch someone in the face you know um so <laughs> yeah that's why i that's why i transitioned <laughs> I I like that. That uh, I feel like you could punch somebody in the face. Let me tell you what. I'm looking at two pictures of you, and there are many out there, but John Sachs had a couple great shots of you, uh, techfall.com. Uh, look for those pictures, folks, because there is a smile that seems to spread from ear to ear on your face. And um, you wrestled with, I call it, an evident joy. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. It seems yeah, it, it, really, it, it just seemed that you had you were absolutely having a ball. Yeah, I definitely like that was just the point of the tournament. I honestly I didn't think I was going to wrestle anymore. I had got a job with WCAP as a massage therapist. And, um, you know, after that, I, I wasn't going to be able to wrestle anymore. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to have this be my last tournament. Maybe I'll leave my shoes on the middle of the mat. Who knows? You know, <laughs> you know, just to have that closure, you know, cause I didn't like how I had left before. It wasn't on my terms, you know, and I wanted to leave on my terms and, you know, and then I won. And so now, um, now I'm on WCAP as a wrestler. <laughs> yeah. I hope I don't see you leave your shoes on the mat for quite some time. You had a tremendous battle with a very talented Takara Winchester and it was a 12, nine victory, but, it was a battle. Talk a little bit about that particular match. Um, I just was, you know, she surprised me with, uh, she obviously is physically, you know, you can tell she's strong and um, things like that. She was really strong. She's just really explosive too. And she caught me when I was out of position twice. You know, I was a little bit too high. She was able to get on her double and finish with a four point takedown. And then again, I was driving out with that single but I was just a little bit too high instead of keeping my, you know, staying in my stance. And so she was able to do, to finish with that throw. And um, so, yeah, she's, uh, she's definitely tough. She's definitely someone that, you know, you got to stay and stay on your game with. Um, but, it, you know, I, that whole time I really worked with a sports psychologist, Dr. Edward Chavez. And, you know, I've been working with him since I was in WCAP the first time. And um, we really, we work with uh, fighting too, but just, you know, staying, staying in the moment and, and not worrying about the results as much, but just, you know, going through the process and 
all right, I looked at the scoreboard. I got, hey, I got plenty of time. You know, there's plenty of time on that board. Even if it's just 30 seconds, there's plenty of time to get that back, you know? So I had like a minute 30 when all that went down too. And so I was like, okay, get it back. And I just stuck to basics and um, I was able to come out on top. How is how is your MMA uh, training affected your wrestling? Has it created a, a better or more well-rounded athlete? Yeah, I really feel like it has, you know, like, um, like even with boxing, uh, like I was telling someone the other day, like the footwork, you know, you have to, you know, be able to cut angles and things like that. Before when I wrestled, I'd just be straightforward, just like boom, boom, boom. And it wasn't very, um, it, it was effective sometimes, but not always, you know, like, especially with the slicker athletes. So I feel like it's definitely helping with my angles. It's helping me, um, just movement and even men mentally you know like she got a little bit rough with me i get hit in the face all the time it's no big deal you know <laughs> so uh, even when she pushed me i guess she she kind of muffed me at the end i didn't even realize that i was just happy <laughs> you know people were like hey, i'm surprised you didn't get mad sharon i thought you were gonna hit her i was like why <laughs> i won you know <laughs> like she, i mean i understand why she's upset but i mean i'm, I'm not gonna get upset about that i won <laughs> 50, so, um, <laughs> 55 kilos is not a olympic weight so no. you you are going to be competing at the World Team Trials in, in Wisconsin next yeah, I'll week. Go down. Yeah, I'll be at 55 for this. But um, after, you know, after, you know, I make that World Team and go to World Championships, hopefully, um, I plan to go down to 53. Uh, my teammate, Whitney Condor, is at 53 kilos. But she, um, I mean, it's about, I fight at 115. So I'm, I don't want to go up just because my teammates there you know right well and i don't blame you let's uh let's talk a little bit about your ultimate goal i mean returning after a uh, almost a three-year hiatus um uh, but still continuing to train obviously your uh physical stature is outstanding very strong uh mm -hmm. i'm not even sure how uh you know how you get to that point other than just shoot through sheer hard work and maybe that's what the wcap program is providing some, uh, the world-class athlete program is providing uh, with the U.S. Army. But also, uh, you know, you, your, your goals as a fighter are, I would imagine, to be a champion. Yes. Yeah, definitely. WCAP, I really feel like, because um, I just started training there again in uh, February when I got on all Army orders. And um, I really feel like that's been, it's been huge in my training, you know, being, being able to go somewhere, you know, and, I'm getting paid. So like, I really was struggling with money just because, you know, I was starting my massage business, trying to finish school, things like that. Um, but you know, I was getting paid so I could go to and from WCAP every day. No problem. No problem with gas, whatever. You know? <laughs> and, uh, so, and then just having that consistency and then, you know, being around people who, who have high goals like that, who are focused, who, you know, Randy Miller, like, I don't know. I feel like I did my best when we were training before, you know, at, um, at Northern Michigan, like it's it really is about who's around you and who's supporting you and, um, the, the strength and conditioning staff, the medical staff, you know, the coaches, the teammates, um, with boxing and wrestling, you know, like they really, I really feel like they've been, they've made a huge difference in my training. And so, um, yeah, I like to joke about my strength. You know, I got that old broad strength now, but it definitely is something that I'm you have sorry, to... you you called it what? Old broad strength. <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, it's definitely something that you have to you know consistently do and whatever. You know, obviously you can see people are more naturally um, built certain ways, but uh, you do It's de it's definitely something that I have to work on. Otherwise, I get fluffy. You know. Well, let me tell you something, kid. At 31 years old, if that's an old, as you said, an old broad, I will, uh, I'll eat my hat, I just, but I don't believe it is. <laughs> I just, I don't, I really don't think I'm that old either. Uh, I just like to say that in comparison to, um, <laughs> to people that I compete against, you know, like even if you listen to, you know, some of the flow wrestling's commentating, they're like Sharon Jacobson, the elder, you know, and my, uh. <laughs> In my fight on, on Invicta, you know, they're like, Jacobson, the elder of Owen, you know, it's like, man, do you have to use that word? You right, know? right, right, right. You could probably, uh, probably get in your right. AARP card any day. 
You made your Invicta FC uh, uh, debut April 24th, and Invicta, as some fans may or may not know, is uh, very supportive of women's fighting. A lot of uh, pros uh, have made their, their debuts and then moved into the ranks of the UFC and other fight organizations around the country and around the world. How have they been to you since uh, April 24th, where you made your debut? I feel like Invicta is is amazing. You know, like they are really supportive. They are really friendly. They are like um, the whole process that you go through, like you get there and then the next day you have like media day and then the next day you weigh in and uh, just everyone was really uh, friendly and supportive and just, hey, do you need anything? Like they even have people that'll braid your hair. <laughs> like, nice. They really do like um, <laughs> you know, help the women. I brought with Ella Farrelletto, my old teammate with me to do that but uh, i was like yeah i do but i got somebody that this is crazy you got people all braid hair you know right but uh uh yeah they totally and then just with their marketing and stuff they're always you know retweeting things you know for me or um just being supportive even in even in wrestling so it's how, how, how long really, does it take how long does it take to braid your hair before a fight at least an hour it depends wow. on what you do I think it took Othello like an hour and a half because she did like this crazy thing and she braided my whole head. It wasn't just the top. Um, and the rest, and for wrestling, I just did the, the little portion right here, but that didn't take that long, probably like 45 minutes. Well, but, an outstanding yeah. performance by you, uh, not just in the Invicta debut April 24th in Kansas City where you won. Uh, unanimous decision, by the way, over Delaney Owen. Always tough, but uh, your record stands at three and one. Ultimate goal for you in the fighting business again, thirty-one. You seem to be right in the middle of your prime. You know, based yeah. on your performance at Invicta and also your performance at the U.S. Open. Yeah, I definitely. I plan on doing this for a while. So, um, especially you know with. I feel like, you know, I'm at that age, I've been doing this a minute, I know what my body needs, I know what, um, where my training is lacking, and of course I work with my coaches too and get their input, and so I just feel like with uh, with this understanding that we have, it, I can just, I could do this for a while, I can do this for a minute, so I'm really, really excited. <laughs> you, you, you described the, being a part of the WCAP program as, as being a part of a family, can you, can you, uh, go into that a little bit why why it's why it is like a family they're there every day you know they're there um even like so the the world team trials guys for greco are out of town but a number of the guys are still here that didn't make the finals you know they they set it up differently this year so it wasn't top seven or whatever it was just the top two that were going to world team trials so um the guys that have stayed back, they've been they've been training with the girls here, you know, helping getting us ready. And they went to the OTC the other day. They'll be there this afternoon. They worked out with us yesterday morning. You know, we only have one required uh, one a day practice, but they're even willing to come in and help us cut weight, whatever whatever we need. You know, um, the the coaches just they're really positive. They're really, I mean, they'll they'll get in your like get on you if you're if you're lacking, you know, but which they should, but um, they're really supportive and um, I don't know. I just I just feel I feel loved, <laughs> you know. I I literally feel loved there, and uh, and I what else could you ask for, you know? So, I'm gonna I'm gonna read a quote, Sharon, if I can. Um, you said, "I'm really proud to be a soldier. I love that I can represent my country." Can you talk about where that comes from and, and, and perhaps even describe the emotion? Um, growing up, my dad, uh, he was uh, drafted for Vietnam, and he only spent about three years in the Army. And he always kind of regretted leaving, you know, like he was in a weird place at that time. And, um, you know, then he became a born-again Christian, and then he met my mom and all this stuff. But um, growing up, he'd always, like, buy us Army gear and, he was always like, you know, anytime it was Veterans Day or Memorial Day or, you know, even just throughout the year, he was he was really supportive of the troops and um, and what what our country stands for. You know, and I feel like he really instilled that in us. Um, my sister, Sarah, she was in the Army for eight years after high school. She um, she got her nursing training there and then uh, she she left, you know, but she, she's still doing nursing or whatever. 
So I just, I had planned to actually join the military after high school and I knew about WCAP. I just wasn't good enough at that time. And, um, I wanted to continue wrestling. So I went on into college and wrestled. Can you hold on a second? Ziggy, come here. Leave it. I'm not sure. Uh, who, who, who are you uh, talking to? Oh, my dog. Your dog? This is Ziggy. <laughs> yeah. I'm, so, I'm not sure why we have so many dogs on our show, but uh, <laughs> we, we, we do. Yeah. <laughs> well, wrestlers always have a dog. Um, yeah, they're, they're burly, too, so I love it. Uh, I have two, actually. And tell but me what, what breed they are. Is it that, is that a bulldog or what? Yeah, he's a French-English bulldog mix. French English bulldog mix looks like a good puppy. Yeah, looks like a, a good, good puppy. puppy. Well, a proud soldier, uh, a proud representative of the United States, and uh, a new 2015 World Team Champ, uh, uh, or excuse me, U.S. Open Champ. But you know what? That may be uh, a, a stunning slip of my tongue. Is that yeah, your right. ultimate goal? <laughs> huh? I didn't mean to pre-announce it, but ultimately, your goal in Madison, Wisconsin, is to become a member of the World Team. That'll be yep. competing in Las Vegas this September. Yeah, that, man. Like I just, uh, I just feel like how you said earlier. I was just, I was just having fun. You know, I just want to continue that. I just want to go out there and continue to have fun. And I feel like it helps me relax. And uh, it's like a dream come true. You know, like you get to, you get to represent your country and your home country. You know, like so. Um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely want to do that. I definitely want to make that team. All right. I know that you said this, but I, I, I've got to ask how how serious you were. I do admit that I have to resist throwing jabs during a bout. Now that you know that you have hands, now that you know you can throw with your boxing training, et cetera, um, how real is that statement? Um, it's mostly like so. It's mostly when I get on top. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> You know, when I couldn't turn him, I was like, man, I just want to punch her in the face, you know, but <laughs> you can't do that, you know, but it's a good reminder because I'm not wearing gloves and uh, I'm in a singlet, not, not fight here, but on a mat, whatever. But, um, it is, it is something that crosses my mind. It's not like I want to just be like, you know, just hit someone, but, um, yeah, especially cause you know, with, with fighting, it opens other things up. Like it, you know, you can be really good at jujitsu, but when you're getting hit in the face, you're, you're not as good at jujitsu. You're, you're worried about getting hit in the face. So, um, you can be really good at wrestling, but when you're getting hit in the face, it's, it's different, you know? So I just, I, it's only to really to think, Oh, how can I open her up? I can't punch her in the face. I gotta do, I gotta wrestle her. You know, so. <laughs> A little more pressure on the ears, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, she'll be competing at the 2015 World Team Trials of Madison, Wisconsin next week. And she has eyes on Las Vegas and the World Championships. We'll see what uh, the outcome is. There's a couple steps to get there. And you know what? I think you have two. Is it two scheduled bouts in Madison? Yeah. Yeah. It's best two out of three. So uh, up to three, hopefully just two. Okay, well, we'll see. I, I, I for one, I, I absolutely love watching you wrestle. So it's it's so much fun. But um, you win it, however you got to win it, kid. And I appreciate you taking the time. Thirty-one years old, Sharon Jacobson makes a stunning return to the mat in Las Vegas. I was proud to introduce her, and she had her hand raised and picked up another stop sign. It took her well a few years since her fourth place finish at the 2012 U.S. Open, but she got one. Nonetheless, great big smile on her face after her win over uh, over her opponent, Jakara Winchester. Again, that score, 12-9. Sharon, did you enjoy being in the Nike hot seat? Say again? Did you enjoy being in the Nike hot seat today? I, yeah, I did. Thank you. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun. Sharon, thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Best to your pups, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in Madison, Wisconsin next week. For all of us at Takedown, I'm Scott Casper. Thank you thank so much, you. Scott. Thank you very much, kid. I appreciate it. For all of us at Takedown, thanks for watching this wonderful interview with Sharon Jacobson. And again, we're looking forward to seeing her in Wisconsin and perhaps even in Las Vegas this September. Thanks for watching. This has been another presentation of the Nike Hot Seat and Takedown Wrestling.